Ah, I gotta go out of here. Stop. So I turn to you guys, Twitter and Instagram. I told you to pick a number. I would then go into my catalog, find the photo, corresponds with that number, and we'll go over it. So let's jump right to it. Also, as you know, because it's a YouTube video, I'm supposed to tell you to like and subscribe. I don't care. So don't do it. You don't have to do shit. You can just watch whatever. Fucking algorithm. Anyway, first photo. So that is uh, Travis Meyer. He uh, does CrossFit. Uh, he's really, really good. He is way better at CrossFit than I am which is not hard to be. Uh, this was during a photo shoot in Las Vegas when I lived in Vegas. It was a really super uh, nice gym, huge. Uh, we had full run of the facility, so I, I can't hate on that. Uh, things I would do differently though, I would definitely go a little wider. I'd like to get, you know, the rest of the weight in the frame, his other hand in the frame. Basically it's garbage and I messed up. So let's not let that happen again. Next shot, Chris Cyborg. One of the baddest humans on the planet. Period. This is for a shoot we did in Orange County. Uh, we did this for Bleacher Report. Jonathan Snowden was writing a story on her and they had me go out to take photos. So we just did some sort of different portraits. You know, it's easy to shoot action stuff with her and hit in the bag, you know, because uh, she's obviously one of the best at it. But this time we wanted to flip it a little bit, so we had her, uh, I remember during this trip we, we went to a, a hair salon and uh, photographed her while she was getting her hair done. Uh, you know, and then for this shoot on this day, you know, we had her in a couple different uh, dresses and we just shot some different stuff, which I, which I really, really dug. Uh, looking back, I wish I would have had another light. For some reason, I only went with one light on this one, uh, probably because I felt rushed. I'm an idiot. Looking back, I wish I would use a second light just so I could have had a little uh, edge there on her right. Um, that's my fault. Again, I look back at photos and realize everything I did wrong. This is from my hotel window in Chengdu, China. Uh, I think this is my second trip to Chengdu, China. I never thought I would ever go to Chengdu, China. I never thought I'd go to China, period. Uh, but so we went there for uh, some seminars that I was uh, doing photos for. Unless we were going to the seminar, there really wasn't much else to do. Uh, so I found myself kind of just living in my hotel room. It was just easier that way. One, I didn't really want to be outside. Air quality was, wasn't the best. And two, th there wasn't much to do else. Like, uh, really nothing to watch on television. Uh, there was really nowhere to go. So I found myself just kind of looking out the window, uh, taking sniper shots, basically. That is Gokhan Saki. That is in Istanbul, Turkey. Shot that for glory. Uh, this was right before he faced Tyrone Spong in the uh, main event. We were all excited to see this bout just because, I mean, Saki versus Spong. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, unfortunately, this is the fight where Tyrone uh, snapped, his, uh, snapped his leg, kicking, uh, doing a low kick to Saki, which he checked. I'll never forget that noise. It's a, it's a very distinct sound, hearing, the, hearing that bone uh, break. Uh, I have photos of Saki, like covering himself, looking at Tyrone's leg, and, and realizing what had happened. It was a awful end to a pretty amazing trip. Istanbul was beautiful, people were wonderful. We had to get on a plane the next day because the doctors for some reason in Turkey said they, they wouldn't be able to operate on Tyrone for a few days. Hopped on a plane, Tyrone uh, had to spend however long the flight was, hours upon hours. Uh, you know, with a broken leg, flying to New York. Uh, in the middle of that flight is when I woke up and everyone was screaming. So I assumed that the plane was crashing. And I didn't have a problem with it. I actually kind of laughed. And I was like, wow, of all the things, I'm gonna die in a plane crash over the Atlantic. Uh, it turned out a guy got completely hammered and started running through the aisles and, and uh, fighting everyone and fighting flight attendants because he wanted to get more alcohol and they said no. So we landed in New York and we still have to catch another flight to Florida uh, to get home and they did not have any first class seats available. So you had to take Tyrone, 6'2", 230 pounds or whatever, giant man with a broken leg. He had to sit in economy with his leg broken and he has it in the aisle so at least he can like have some space or whatever and of course the flight attendant comes through and goes, sir, your leg can't be out for takeoff. So he had to then shove himself into the tiny little economy seat uh, for the, for the takeoff of the flight to make it home. It was brutal. Uh, we eventually made it home. He had surgery the next day in Miami. I went down and saw him in his uh, hospital room and he was just passed out, but that was, a, that was a crazy trip. Something I'll never forget. And it's, it's one thing to like photograph these athletes, you know, and 
it's another thing, you know, as our relationships progress and we become friends and family, basically. And then to see someone like that, see someone so strong, and then have that happen to them, it's just, it's a hard thing to see. And you feel helpless, because there's really nothing you can do. There's nothing I can do to help him. There's nothing I can do to change the outcome. And then you have this weird responsibility, because I'm there shooting for glory, like I have to document it. And there's a little bit of guilt, you know? There's guilt there, seeing your friend in pain, and you have to snap away. Um, you know, we can look back now that, you know, he's healthy and everything's fine and, and everything's okay, but at the time, it's, it's uh, something you struggle with. Uh, that's Dion Staring working with Alistair Overeem at the old, old Jocko Gym. Um, I didn't get to photograph Overeem much. Uh, he had this thing uh, about privacy, which I completely respect. Uh, it was more just trying to explain to him, like, I'm not going to put out a bad photo of you. I have no desire to do that. My whole job is to make you look good. As time progressed, we got better with that, and I found myself taking more and more photographs of him. But uh, the first couple months was definitely challenging. I was felt like an outsider in my own gym. It was really, really weird. Uh, if I could do this photo over, I just wouldn't take it. It's kind of a boring photo. It does really nothing. Uh, shutter speed's too slow. I screwed up. Basically is what I'm learning is I screwed up. Next photo is Michael Johnson, The Menace. Uh, we shot this for UFC Magazine. So a lot of times uh, I think people have this idea that magazines call you and go, here's what we're going to do, here's where you're going to go, here's what you're going to shoot with. And usually it turns out, hey, we need you to shoot this guy, make it look cool. And that's kind of what this was. Uh, so we went and we got an Audi R8 and we went around Florida and basically we did this in about two hours just trying to find uh, spots. We had no spots to shoot. So we found this parking garage, so we shot in there. Uh, we went to the roof of the parking garage, did a couple other shoots where he was jumping out of the car. Then we found an abandoned uh, place and we did a couple shots there. So really, it was everything you make up on the fly. Uh, I believe this is Davari. He is a uh, pro wrestler. So these were when I worked, uh, I didn't work for the WWE, but I shot for the WWE. One of their head guys came down to our uh, Jocko gym and said that they were looking for athletes to come try out, you know, to see if they, you know, had what it takes to be a pro wrestler and maybe they could spot talent, other guys in the gym that, you know, maybe you're not going to cut out for MMA, but you could be a wrestler. So as I talked to the guy who was, who was down there, he was like, wow, you really are a wrestling fan. And I was like, yes, I'm a huge dork. He's like, well, you know, we need people to come photograph these tryouts if you're not doing anything, uh, come up. So every two, three months or so, I would make the long ass drive to Orlando at like 5, 4.30, 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I get paid for it, which I didn't even care because I was just like, I just want to be around the WWE. I just want to be a part of this. I don't give a shit. Like, the check is a bonus. I still remember the first time I got that check in the mail with the WWE logo on it, and I was just like, oh my god, should I frame it? And it's like, no, you need money, cash it. Uh, so I cashed it. But I got to see a lot of people come up through the ranks. It's really cool now to watch them on television, and I remember shooting their tryout. I remember seeing them in their original gear, or gear that, you know, is just not good, and to see them progress and, and now become superstars, it's, uh, it's really awesome. Uh, so this next shot, this is in Philadelphia. I think it was UFC 133, Rashad was facing Tito Ortiz. Uh, it was not the original main event, but someone fell out, I think it was Machida or someone else, and Tito jumped in on short notice to save the fight. Uh, mad props to Tito for that. And so this was, uh, I believe, Heavy was shooting their, uh, shooting their show. Uh, James Law right there and Megan O'Leary. Uh, doing some high kicks in the lobby of some hotel in Philadelphia. It's kind of cool to look back on this and see how far both of them have come. You know, James Law now is uh, living in L.A., fucking shooting everything, traveling everywhere. And Megan has obviously become one of, if not the face of, of UFC on the mic. So, you know, we had a lot of fun times back in those days. Land in a city, eat at some bad hotel, find some restaurant to have a semblance of normal life and then prep all day to get ready for the fight. As for what's wrong in this photo, uh, shutter speed is too slow. Way too blurry. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that it's actually out of focus. Yep, it's out of focus. Uh, basically just a bad photo. But I kept it because it's a cool memory. But 
Yeah, no one should have hired me to take photos back then. And Michael Demanis Johnson, he is doing wrestling with Kamaru Usman, who is now the UFC welterweight champion. Exposure's okay. Uh, shutter speed is definitely too slow, as you can see from all the blurriness. The focus is on Kamaru, uh, not on Mike. Uh, his face is blurry. Uh, something I should throw away. Uh, this last shot is Becky Lynch. Shot this in Venice Beach, California. I was living in Vegas at the time. Uh, she hit me up told me to come out to LA, we would do a full day of shooting. Uh, I jumped at the opportunity, of course. One, because she's cool. Two, I love pro wrestling. Hopped on a plane, landed that morning, she picked me up, and basically for the whole day, just followed her around. We shot some stuff in her gym, we shot some stuff walking around, we shot some stuff in Venice Beach, uh, we shot some stuff uh, in her parking garage. Every everywhere was a set, basically. We just kept changing outfits and taking photos, so that way we had a, a whole bunch of content uh, this was near the end of the day, walking around Venice Beach, uh, just trying to find cool walls. Uh, basically, anywhere that looked cool that didn't smell like piss. That's what we did. This was a few years ago, so again, it's always cool to look back on this and to see how far she has come. Because she is now one of, if not the most popular wrestler in WWE. And to see like everyone wearing her shirts and everyone cheering for her and all these kids going crazy for her. Uh, it's always fun, man. I have a relationship with everyone I shoot. Basically, once I take your photo, you're my homie. And I root for you. And I root for your success. And that's why if you see on my Instagram, you know, I'm posting things from all walks of life, from all different people, hyping them up. Because I want to see my people do well. Alright, so that's it. That was a little trip down memory lane going through my awful photos. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, hopefully this thing ends soon. That way you guys don't have to keep seeing this shoe wall. Maybe one day we do a shoe tour. These are shoes. Don't like, don't subscribe. Just keep living your life. Love you. Get me out, get me out of here. I gotta go, I don't wanna do this anymore. I don't wanna be here anymore. Autofocus is good though. Look, I can just keep spinning and it finds me. Good job, Cannon. You did something right. Even if it, you wouldn't let me borrow a new 1DX3 for the Connor fight. We're still friends. Man, these are bad. What was I doing? Who paid me to take these photos? They're so bad. God damn. Let me look at this. Let me look at the cyborg one again. Man, like, put another light, Ryan. Like, what are you doing? What was I thinking? You know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. Sometimes when you're with, uh, with an athlete or whatever, you, you don't want to, like make them bored and so you kind of rush things I wouldn't do that now but then shouldn't even done it then but I was probably just like oh you know time's valuable and I just oh, screw it we'll make one light work I just need a second light it's so bad so bad this crossfit photo like what am I doing what what am I doing show the whole fucking weight idiot like what is that bottom corner like what's the point does nothing. Like, I guess, I mean, I'm trying to show the logo of the shirt. I'm just go wider. So stupid. Bad shot. Bad shot. Guy walking. China. Overexposed. Should have been more contrast. It's just a boring photo. That's what happens when you're stuck in a hotel room. I think it's just natural light. I should have had another light source. It just falls a little flat. Bad. Bad. Some of this gym stuff, though, it's like, what are you doing, man? You have this fear. Like, you have this fear of ISO. Like, it's gonna be grainy. Dude, I'd rather be fucking... non-blurry. Becky photo. I mean, it's Becky. You can't take a bad photo of Becky. Ugh. Go back and look and realize I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I know what I'm doing. Like a little bit I know what I'm doing. I know more. I know that I know more now than I did back then. But I didn't know anything back then. So I was really not saying much. So bad.